It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Lost, written by J.A. Babian. Another short story recovered from the archives, January 17th, 2022. People place a great deal of trust in innocence. I'm here to tell you it's not all it's cracked up to be. Ben had been six when he was lost. Oh, his body was still in the hospital bed and his mother talked to him every day. He simply could not respond. Mama cranked up the bed so he could see out the window. She didn't know if he was seeing or not when Ben's eyes were open. It was a beautiful sunny day. She wanted him to enjoy the beauty outside the window. Mom didn't understand. He was truly outside, outside his body. He watched everything and heard all of what his parents said. His dad cried a lot when his mom went shopping. Dad would hold his limp hand and cry. This wasn't Dad's fault. Ben had made a choice. Mom wanted to take him off the feeding tube, to let his wasting body die. She said that her little boy wasn't in that husk anymore. It had been too long. Four years was way too long. So he'd learned that he was ten now. Funny how time and birthdays go missing when you float free in the crisp New England air. Dad still prayed for his son to wake up. Then he cried some more. Ben heard his dad's prayers. He couldn't find a way to tell his dad that he was awake, that he floated freely, and the experience was fun. What Ben didn't like is seeing what happened to Mom and Dad since he'd left. He didn't mean to leave. Now he didn't know if he could go back. That dumb doctor told his mom that his body was dead and the brain just didn't know it yet. He wanted to kick the man in his shins. Dad was there late into the night. Ben didn't know what time of day or night it was. But Dad was there. He refused to do as the doctor suggested and Mom left them. Why did she do that? He could find her any time. Ben was connected to her in some way. She's left and was living alone six blocks over on Elm. She didn't even go to work anymore. Dad hired a woman to come in and take care of Ben while he worked. She was nice. Now 16 years on, she saw things in Ben he didn't know even existed. She'd tell him that his 22-year-old self was handsome. She'd shave his faith and bathe him. Her sad smile toward his heart and mind. How to get back? Should he even try? Did it mean reliving the fall, that horrible fall? It was only four feet. He didn't even break a bone. Ben had jumped from his body just as the impact with the gravel street occurred his bike rolling into traffic, the red pickup sliding to a stop, missing him but crushing his bike. That bike had been freedom. Now he was lost. Could a priest link him back to his body? Like the movie The Exorcist? No, that was wrong. The demon thing had to come out of the girl. That was different. How would he tell anyone he was even here? The woman stopped coming one day. She was replaced by another who wasn't as nice. That's when it happened, when he searched for the first woman. He found her. She was killed in a train derailment. Now he wanted her for a friend. She was there at the spot where the streetcar and the freight train collided. She looked okay, but she said she knew she was dead. She could talk 
to and see Ben. She went with him away from where she had died. Carolyn, why are you still here? I didn't die, but you did. I don't understand. I don't know, Ben. I was thinking about how to help you when the train ran over the streetcar from the rear. I wasn't ready to die, but fate had other plans. I'm so glad you came and found me. Being able to talk to you helps me understand why I had to die so soon. It could be that you needed me in a way I couldn't understand. That talking with you is how I'm supposed to help. Maybe. Carolyn, thank you for being my friend and caring for my body. Do you have any idea how I could get back into my body? No, I don't, Ben. Your dad hangs on to the hope that you will come back. Every dime he's made since your accident has been paid for your care. He's broke and lost your mom because he will not give up. Your care has become his existence. It isn't fair to him or you. Does he need just to let me go then? It's been 17 years, Carolyn. No, Ben. I died in 2017. It's 2022 now. It's been 22 years. You'll be 28 in February. Two months later, the money ran out. Ben's dad didn't have a choice. He had to let Ben's body die. He sat with Ben and waited for the lack of nourishment to run its course. He didn't bathe. He didn't sleep. He didn't leave for two days. That's what it took for Ben's body to die. He did cry and cry. His thoughts filled the air with one question. Why? Ben didn't feel it when his body stopped. He did see it. The slight shudder and catch breath. Then there was nothing. Carolyn's spirit was with him. She cried too, but being a ghost no one saw him. No one heard. Then the worst thing imaginable happened. Ben saw his dad pull out a 44 caliber Colt revolver. He watched while he slid the barrel into his mouth and fired. Blood, brains, and gore splattered the walls. Worst of all, his dad's spirit didn't linger to talk or anything. A dark black hole opened under his spirit and pulled it down into screaming darkness. Then there was silence again. Ben, we need to leave too. This is a horrid place full of pain and sorrow. It's home, Carolyn. No, Ben. Home is that light behind us. That's where we need to go. Don't wait. It may not shine on us again. Ben couldn't hold her hand, but she was his friend. She was likely right. He didn't know. Everything stopped for him at six years old. If only he'd known more about life, fear, and death then. Innocence isn't not knowing about life. He left with Carolyn into the light. Ben's mom found them there. All the spirits were gone. She was so focused on the waste, she couldn't celebrate her husband and son's lives. Many years later, when Ben's mom was old, she wrote a book and called it Lost. Then she too passed beyond all senses. Thank you for joining us for Lost, written by J.A. Babian and told by the author himself. This has been a Privy Project production. Join us next week for another tale from the archives. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. 
That's D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E.com. Music.